The White House takes LGBTQ rights fight to Ghana, and Ghanaian lawmakers are fighting back. It was all quiet on the promotion of the proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values bill until U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris came into town this week. When will U.S. politicians learn to mind their own business and quit policing and interfering in the affairs of other countries? With respect to uh, the rights of, of gays and lesbians, I believe in the principle of treating people equally under the law. If you look at the history of countries around the world, when you start treating people differently, not because of any harm they're doing anybody, but because they're different, that's the path whereby freedoms begin to erode. Listen to how the Kenya president responded to President Obama. The fact of the matter is that Kenya and the United States, we share so many values. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. For Kenyans today, the issue of gay rights is really a non-issue. We want to focus on other areas that are day-to-day -day living for our people. But as of now, the fact remains that this issue is not really an issue that is on the foremost mind of Kenyans, and that is the fact. Uh, thank you both for taking the time. Zolan Kano Youngs from the New York Times. Uh, Madam Vice President, you have made clear that the message of this trip is centered on a collaborative future. Um, at the same time, the Biden administration committed to calling out any foreign government that advanced anti-gay legislation or violates human rights. All three of the countries that you are visiting on this trip have advanced anti-gay, advanced or proposed uh, anti-gay legislation. Has proposed a bill that would imprison those that engage in same sex intercourse. Gay sex remains a crime in Tanzania, and same sex relationships are outlaw outlawed in Zambia. What have you said to the president and plan to say to other leaders on this trip about the crackdown on human rights? First of all, we don't have any such legislation here in Ghana. A bill has been proposed to the parliament of Ghana, which has all kinds of ramifications, which is now being considered by the parliament. It hasn't been passed. So the statement that there is legislation in Ghana to that effect is not accurate. The bill is going through the parliament. It's going through the parliament. The attorney general has found it necessary to speak to the committee about it regarding the constitutionality or otherwise of several of its provisions, and the parliament is dealing with it. The, at the end of the process, I will come in. But in the, in the meantime, the parliament is dealing with it. And I have no doubt that the parliament of Ghana will show, as it has done in the past, one, first of all, its sensitivity to human rights issues, as well as to the feelings of our population, and will come out with a responsible response. My understanding, the substantial elements of the bill have already been modified. I have raised this issue. And let me be clear about where we stand. First of all, for the American press who are here, you know that a great deal of, of work in my career has been to address human rights issues, equality issues across the board, including as it relates to the LGBT community. And I feel very strongly about the importance of supporting uh, the, the, the freedom and, and supporting and fighting for equality among all people and that all people be treated equally. I will also say that uh, this is an issue that we consider and I consider to be a human rights issue and that will not change. That comment and the response by the president, Nane Kufadu, that suggested the bill had been watered down has since triggered a reaction from Speaker of Parliament, Alban Babin. The bill will be passed. This is the word to His Excellency the President. There is no way he can intervene. The bill will punish teaching or inducing a child into sexual acts other than what it calls the binary category of male or female or anyone who evokes the interests of the child in an activity prohibited under the act to not less than six years in prison and not more than 10 years in prison. We will address the issue of homosexuality being heralded by woke activists as a human rights issue shortly. It is disturbing that these leaders would travel thousands of miles across the sea, and what they deem pertinent to discuss is how to coax a sovereign nation into violating its values and accepting LGBTQ as an acceptable lifestyle. Recently, the Ugandan parliament passed a bill making LGBTQ illegal in their country. 
As you would have imagined, the woke politicians in the United States, Canada, and other Western countries sharply condemned the bill. They threatened economic sanctions if Uganda signed the bill into law. The bill is one of the most extreme anti-LGBTQI plus laws in the world. If the AHA is signed into law and enacted, it would impinge upon universal human rights, deter tourism, and invest in Uganda and damage Uganda's international reputation. We're, uh, we're certainly watching this real closely, and uh, we would have to take a look at whether or not there might be um, uh, repercussions that we would have to take, per per perhaps in an economic uh, way, uh, should this law actually get passed uh, and enacted. Uh, taking a moment to condemn in the absolute strongest terms uh, the despicable law uh, put forward by the Ugandan government. And we call upon all leaders, uh, including uh, all leaders around the world, or particularly Commonwealth leaders, uh, to come out and clearly condemn uh, this uh, despicable piece of legislation. If you want to watch the full video, see the link in the description or at the end of this video. Despite Harris's pressure on Ghana to abandon passing any legislation to ban homosexuality, the Ghanaian lawmakers are moving forward with the bill. In Ghana, there is a draft bill in Parliament seeking to criminalize severe aspects of LGBTQ with widespread support from religious bodies, but also significant opposition from civil society. Proponents of the bill have been adamant that no amount of external pressure will affect their effort to get the bill passed. If the Attorney General has any reservations, he should stop filibustering the process. He should allow the committee to proceed. He should come on the floor. As Attorney General, he will be giving audience on the floor and come and debate us on the floor and stop wasting our time in the committee. You know, when he goes to Geneva to go and make promises to the West that the bill will not do things, he's not a member of parliament. He has no power to pass law. If he wants to fight our bill, he should bring his own bill to Parliament to come and counter our own, and we'll meet him on the floor. Right. Uh, I'm sure you follow the conversation, um, especially uh, following Kamala Harris's visit to Ghana. In that chat with President Akufado, it came up again, where she's saying that this is purely a human rights issue, and um, the President also assured that Ghana is yet or still debating it in Parliament. What are your initial reactions to these comments from both the U.S. Vice President and President Akufado? Well... Two things. I, I thought that President Akufado would have used this opportunity to send a clear message to the world and to the country that his fidelity to the Ghanaian people and to the constitution of and would have sent a clear message that Ghana is not going to entertain um, any expressions of homosexuality. While some people in the West accuse Africa of violating human rights, the fact of the matter is either these people have not looked into what the bill covers or are determined to impose an ungodly lifestyle on the people of Africa. Most African countries, including Ghana, value traditional family structures where husband and wife raise kids. The bill seeks to ensure that people of the same sex don't marry, adopt, and foster children. It also aims to discourage the promotion of homosexuality in Ghana. The focus of the bill, which has to do with voiding marriages, preventing them from adopting children or fostering children, the, 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 the clamp down on platforms and media houses that are going to do promotion and advocacy or, or push those materials still remains in force. All, all, all um, expressions of it, be it lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, you know, are all here, are all in there. So I, when he says the bill has been watered down, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You have to admire Mr. Sam George, a member of parliament, for being strong enough to call out his president for failing to make it clear that Ghana does not tolerate the imposition of LGBTQ by America or another Western country. Moreover, he called out Harris's hypocrisy of crying about human rights violations in Ghana when human rights are being violated in America. Mrs. Kamala Harris should be the last person to come and talk about human rights in Ghana. Barely two hours ago, in the country where she's vice president in the United States, a gun woman, walked, a lady in her 20s, walked into a school with pits, killed, struck and killed three school children and three adults. Those are the human rights of her country citizens that Kamala Harris should be worried about. She's vice president of America, and on a daily basis, more people die from gun violence in the U.S. than malaria kills in Africa or in Ghana. Mm. That should be of concern to her. Please join us in our fight for the truth. 
please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. It is hypocritical for Harris to talk about human rights violations when she champions the violation of the rights of unborn babies in America. According to Guttmacher Institute, the rights of almost one million unborn babies were violated in 2020 in the United States. A national emergency would have been issued if that many adult lives were taken. Why is Ms. Harris silent, yet crying about human rights violations in another sovereign country? If only American leaders would deal with their human rights infringements, learn to respect other countries and their values, and stop interfering, dictating, and imposing their ungodly ideologies on other countries. Ghana's speaker deserves credit for encouraging lawmakers not to be intimidated by Harris. He criticized Kamala Harris's position on Ghana's anti-LGBTQ bill. Don't be intimidated by any person. Hallelujah. We need to legislate. Our friends just passed their law in Uganda. We may not go the way they have gone because our constitution is very clear as to the direction we should move. And so we'll be guided by that. And so what are you afraid of? If you have the whole people behind you, if God is with you, who can be against you? The vice president just did is it yesterday. I mean, these things should not be tolerated. That is undemocratic. What is democracy? That somebody else will have to dictate to me as to what is good and what is bad. On head of, the bill will be passed. One has to ask whether the U.S. will bully and sanction countries like Saudi Arabia to enforce homosexual rights. Saudi Arabia has far stricter LGBTQ restrictions than Uganda's and Ghana's bills. The world is celebrating Pride Month, but in Saudi Arabia, instead of rainbow parades, there are rainbow raids. The kingdom is seizing rainbow-colored toys and articles of clothing from shops. What's their reason? a crackdown on homosexuality. Items targeted in the recent raids include rainbow-colored bows, skirts, hats, and pencil cases, most of them apparently manufactured for young children. According to Saudi Arabia, the colors send a poisoned message to children, quote-unquote. Homosexuality is illegal in Saudi Arabia. It is punishable by a number of penalties, ranging from flogging to impris imprisonment and even execution. Same-sex marriages and civil partnerships are not recognized. So why is the United States not imposing sanctions on Saudi Arabia? Uh, just last week when Uganda passed the law, uh, the U.S. has reacted swiftly saying that they are going to be um, sanctioning or you know imposing some kind of economic sanctions on uganda again two things the u.s is a they're cowards why didn't they issue threats to 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 qatar why did they not stop their u.s male team from playing in qatar why did they not issue sanctions against qatar are they not trading with saudi arabia is saudi arabia not one of their biggest traders is the u.s not selling arms the u.s sells over one almost a trillion dollars of military hardware to qatar and bahrain is it not hypocrisy? Mm. And in those countries, homosexuality is punished by death. So why are they coming to flex their muscles on African countries that are saddled with poor leadership that has made us a poor, poor country? They're cowards. Cowards are the ones who look for weaklings to fight on them. If America wants to flex its muscle, it will flex its muscle on Turkey. It will flex its muscle on Russia, which has also banned homosexuality. It will flex its muscle on Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Bahrain. Mm. Who, who, who punish homosexuality by death? And then we will take America serious. But I mean, if you want to flex your muscles on weaklings, you're a coward. Nothing more, nothing less. Those were strong words, but he spoke the truth. As mentioned in previous videos, gays are humans and should be treated as such. We do not want to lose sight of the main issue. Homosexuality is a sin according to the Bible. And just like other sinful behaviors, God will forgive any sinner if they repent and forsake their sinful ways. Idolaters are not in the kingdom because they're worshiping someone other than God or something other than God. That's false religion. Adulterers are not in the kingdom. Adultery means the violation of marital codes, marital pledges, marital covenants violation of marriage vows. They're not in the kingdom. Thieves are not in the kingdom. The greedy or the covetous are not in the kingdom. 
drunkards are not in the kingdom, revilers or slanderers are not in the kingdom, and swindlers or extortioners, con men, criminals, etc., are not in the kingdom. Now so far, I haven't heard about any laws that the government is going to make to forbid us from trying to convert swindlers or trying to convert slanderers or trying to convert drunkards or thieves. There are no laws made to protect those people, but they make laws to protect two of these categories, the effeminate and the homosexuals. Why is the government doing that? Why has the government selected sins to protect? Why is that happening? Because the government is under the sway of Satan himself, and the damage done by these sins is massive, substantial, and seminal because it destroys human identity, destroys marriage, and destroys the family, and destroys children, and destroys the society. Let us pray that Ghana's leaders will not be intimidated by the U.S. and its allies. 